And welcome to Hashtag Truth. Tonight I have the one and only Art Long, a.k.a. Father Darkness, a.k.a. The Dancing Machine. How are you doing, Mr. Art? I'm good. Thanks for having me tonight. Ah, uh, Man, it's always a pleasure to have somebody that's been in the business as long as you can tell us some stories and and we were talking about one just before coming on air, and I'm going to hit that right right off the bat. I was looking through YouTube, kind of looking you up to see some matches, and the first match I come across was back about 2013. It was yeah. you versus Father Darkness. What do you yeah. – tell us a little bit about that match. That was, uh, that was in Una, the Una Fire Department uh, in Spartanburg. and. Uh, it was a startup company and I was going through some kind of brain damage kind of thing. And, uh, I, uh, I was the dance machine art long and father darkness came back under a mask and, uh, was starting trouble with me. So, uh, me and, uh, father darkness stepped in the ring and I came out with, uh, art of mania. And I'm sure that's a thing everybody loves. I had, I had the Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan to the T. It was uh, art. The music, the whole nine yards, man. Oh yeah, it it was beautiful. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with that. It, it was actually called Match of the Night. It actually got Match of the Night. So, I mean, for a wrestling manager to dress up as Hulk Hogan and the crowd loved it. I mean, it's one of those things when you watch it on Facebook, you might like it, but when you were there, you felt it. Like you got goosebumps. When you hear that real American music and I'm ripping off the T-shirt and it was, I'm telling you, that was one of my favorite matches. So I'm glad you kind of brought that up earlier. No doubt, man. I, I love watching all your stuff, man. I, I follow your page and and when you put stuff up there, pictures of, of wrestlers that you've seen and shook hands with and talked to. Oh, yeah. uh, here recently, you, on your Facebook page, you put up some pictures. Uh, you got to see The Undertaker in person. Tell us about that. Oh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. That was down at uh, Charleston, South Carolina. It was um, at a bar. can't remember what the bar was called, but I, I, I read that he was going to be there. So I went down there, of course, and I got to meet him and talk to him. And I actually got him to, you know, call me what you want to. But, yes, I got his autograph on a couple things, but it's the undertaker. He's a living legend. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> no matter who so, you are, wrestler yeah. fan, I don't yeah. care how big you are. If you got it a chance the, to get the undertaker's autograph, man. I did. And I actually <laughs> got his autograph and I don't know. People might get mad at me about this, but I actually got his autograph on the title that abyss held when I managed him. So I what's wrong have, with that? I mean, still, now you got the I, best of both yeah. worlds. You got the Monster Abyss with his title, plus you yeah. got the Monster, the Undertaker from the WWE signing that title. You got the best yep. of both worlds on one title, bro. I, I can't be mad at you. I'm jealous. Yeah. That thing is in a safe. I don't, I don't ever take that thing out. That thing's my prized possession right there. Right? No doubt. Now, I've got to ask you, because, you know, with hashtag truth, we always go to this question. How long have you been in the business, and what got you started in professional wrestling? I started in 98. This is what I tell everybody. I started in 98, but I didn't get good until 2007. Okay. And... 2007 is when Father Darkness started. And uh, now, how did, how did Father Darkness come about? It was not my idea originally. Uh, a friend of mine at work, I was working a job. His name was Damian Legion. 
I'm sure you. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty big name. <laughs> he was my Damien Legion was my very first client, and we were friends at work. And he knew that I done wrestling, and he was interested in it. And uh, he asked me how to get started in it, so I told him where to go and what to do and who to see. And man, he took on like a bullet and he did great. So, uh, and he still is to this day. Right. But, uh, <clears throat> he came up to me one day and asked me if I would be his manager. And he had this idea that I would dress up as a minister and speak Latin, like a reference from some kind of movie. I don't, I don't, I never got the movie references from like reservoir dogs or something like that. I don't know. Okay. Okay. But he, he wanted me to come out and speak Latin. I was like, okay. So when I went back and we started doing training and going through it so I could get ready, um, Chief J. Eagle, uh, that's where we were at the time, he put a microphone in my hand and did like a fake eagle's nest during training. Right. And they, they, had, me, they had me talk. They did an interview with me. And... Uh, Everybody in the ring stopped. Everybody that was around stopped. And they were all staring at me and Eagle. And at the end of that interview, they said, no, you're not doing this Latin thing. You're going to be a talker. And so that was kind of the birth of the gimmick and the idea. It developed a lot more because the first time I ever went to the ring, I was in a Halloween costume. Oh, no. <laughs> it, oh, oh, yeah. It was horrible. First time I was in the ring, I was like in a pinhead Halloween costume with an airbrush shirt. And, but then we got to the look like the picture you posted about our interview today. I, I went right. out and I bought the real deal. I got the real priest robe now. I got the collar. I got the my buddy, the collection plate that's at the every book. show with me. The book. The book is retired. The book got beat badly. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the book. I love the book. When we first started the book, it um, we would walk to the ring and the book would be open and the book would glow. Oh, wow. I didn't know so, that. Well, we did that for about three months. And then the Wyatt family came out with their lanterns. Oh, so people thought we were taking that from them. Right. So we stopped we stopped the glowing book and changed it a little bit because we didn't want people to think we were stealing from other people. Right. But as I, 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 I don't I don't I don't I don't get stuff. how how you opening a book and it glowing would be like I, I kind of see what you're saying, but to me that yeah, the light, yeah, out to the light. yeah, it, it's it, to me it's two different things. I, I still would have enjoyed it. I would have I would have been mad if I would have saw that and then you quit because that that was probably a really awesome thing. That was probably a really awesome visual to see when you come out, you know, and you got your you know your eyes are painted up and you look you know oh, yeah. real evil, and all of a sudden you open this book and it just glows. Oh, I bet I bet you have some pictures of that that would just freak somebody out, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We we had a ton and but after we stopped it from glowing, we started doing like the smoke. So the book would smoke when we come out and but the book got beat up, dude. Everybody I ever worked with wanted to use the book as a weapon. <laughs> Everybody wanted to get hit or use the book to hit somebody, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. The barbarians <laughs> used it. Gangrels used it. Uh, I've used it a million times. And finally, they, they got this big hole in it, and I couldn't keep it together anymore. So I still have the book. It's still in my collection, of course. But, uh, yeah, I, I decided to go with something tougher, like the collection plate, and that's when I started using that. I I bet a lot of people uh, turned down getting hit by that. Uh, a real collection plate's pretty thick. Oh no, they no. Actually, they always want to be the very first person that was ever hit with it was actually me, <laughs> because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to hurt somebody with it. <laughs> Joshua so said, first... "No one likes the book." Yeah, everyone likes the book, Joshua. Everyone. Oh, if yeah. you like Father Dyke, Darkness, man, you can't be Father Darkness without the book. 
<laughs> Go ahead. That was, that was my first gimmick. But uh, the very first person that was hit with that plate was me, and it was by Dylan Dollar. And actually, Dylan Dollar's in the Philippines right now, so that dude's taking off. He's doing real good. Yeah, I just I just uh, put a picture up on my Facebook page of uh, where he's over there. He said 200 people got yeah. saved uh, at the wrestling yeah. match where he's at, and I put, you know, God, God and wrestling, man. Perfect, perfect combination. Okay. Awesome picture. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're doing great stuff down there. American GI, Dylan Dollar, Travis Thompson, all them. They're doing great, man. No doubt. So what is the craziest thing you ever saw being Father Darkness in a match or something? What was the craziest predicament that a promoter or somebody tried to put you in? Uh, man, I've been in a lot of those. <laughs> What was the craziest? What was one that you what what, what was one that you kind of thought? I, I really don't want to do this, but if that's what you want, I, I I guess I'll go do it. But well, I I, I got one that jumps out right now that they okay. wanted me to do that I didn't do. Okay, there you go. That's the story you want to hear. Uh, they wanted me to do drag, like they wanted me to have a sister that was played by me and i turned that down <laughs> they wanted you to have a sister of father darkness and you come yeah. out in women's clothing well no they wanted me to dress up as a nun oh a and nun he, okay okay i get it now <laughs> a, a <laughs> female version of me and I was oh like, no. my goodness <laughs> no Josh i can't do that Joshua wants to know what was your most memorable match. Uh, wow. They, I've had a lot of them. My most, my most memorable one was it was it wasn't a match I was in. It was a match that I was managing. Okay. But and I definitely want to talk about this guy during this interview. It was Abyss versus uh, James Drake. Now he's oh. going by J.D. Drake. Yes. And uh, that was my most memorable because James, like, threw me in the ring and he gave me the moonsault and landed on me. And, like, but I've managed James Drake, so we got a lot of history together. But my most memorable match was the two matches that a Abyss fought James Drake. Oh, and the wow. reason that is, and the reason those are my two most memorable matches is because Abyss was a guy I always wanted to manage. And James Drake is someone I've worked with for years. And those two matches they had uh, for the PCW title, it was a heavyweight title match. Both of them were phenomenal and excellent and i was just i i'm standing ringside and i'm a part of it and i'm getting beat up and i'm involved and i'm just sitting there like i can't believe that i'm doing this <laughs> i can't I believe was, i'm a part of this right <laughs> yeah yeah it was amazing to me and now uh and and i wanted to mention this at least uh tomorrow night james drake is going to be on the wwe network that's right. He's going to be for part the, of Evolve. The, yeah, the Evolve pay-per-view. He's like the main event. He's the heavyweight champion of Evolve now, and he's going to be on there. So if any of you guys are watching this and you have the network, please watch that tomorrow. Watch my James Drake and me. We've worked together for years, and he's a good buddy. We did shows down in Myrtle Beach together, and we <laughs> – me and James, we have a lot of stories, but – uh Man, I'm proud of him, man. I'm I'm not one of those guys that get bitter or jealous or anything. I'm just so happy to know that James Drake, I get to watch my friend on TV tomorrow. Is it, isn't isn't that what it's all game. about, brother? Because I always make the claim, yeah. man, and people ask me, you know, a, yeah. a thousand times a day, why do you do this show? I do it because of that exact reason. If one of the guys, you know, I, you will be my, I think you're my 25th or 26th interview on hashtag truth 
And if any of these 26 people ever make it to the WWE or NXT or Ring of Honor or any, you know, TV show, I can look up and go, man, look, I interviewed that guy before he became popular. I'm so proud of him. Awesome. Way to go, dude. That that's 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 my payback. No, yeah. and that's that's basically what I'm doing. Like I'm managing guys that are. If if I manage a guy like Big Game James a few times, I've worked with Crucifix. He's been on Raw a few times. I've worked with several guys that's been on Raw, but uh, James tomorrow. I mean, this is the first time they've ever had a different company on the network. This is big, right? This is like something you wouldn't think would ever happen. And they're going to do it tomorrow night on the WWE Network. And, man, I just can't be happier for James, and I'm proud of him. And I got my chicken wings ordered. I'm going to be watching the show. So <laughs> I'm ready to I, go. I, I like both shows that are going to be on that night. I hate to tell you, I'm going to be watching AEW, and then I'm going to go back and, and, and watch – uh, that show evolve on on the network. That's the good thing about having the network uh, is it's always going to be there. So I, I mean, I want to see what AEW is going to do, and I also want to see James Drake and all these you know up and comers that are that are there in WWE. So I'm watching both shows. Uh, I, I just oh. got to watch both, man. <laughs> oh, I'm a no, mark I, like I, that. I made that yet. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be watching J. He goes by JD Drake now. That's what yeah. I'm gonna be watching tomorrow. I'm a, I'm going for the hometown boy. So how many how many wrestlers have you managed? I mean, you, you've sat you probably named uh, a half a dozen just off the top of your head, but uh, give me a round number of how many wrestlers you've actually managed in your career. Honestly, I couldn't tell you. It's more than fifty. Wow. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. Of those 50 guys, who was your favorite? Who is the guy that you wish that you do today, if you could be standing next to him being Father Darkness and being his manager, who would that guy be right now? Oh, you put me in a hard – there's two. <laughs> okay. There's two. I, can't, I can't pick between the two. Okay. But uh, if he still wrestled, he don't wrestle anymore. One of them would, of course, be the Monster Abyss. Oh, and, can't go wrong with that. The other one, the other one is Big Country Rob Ordway. Wow! Now there, now of all the names you've named, I did not know that you managed Big Country back in the day. Oh, I've managed Big Country for probably ten years. Wow. Oh, yeah. I, I, we, I mean, we have our ups and downs. We fight. We make up. We get back together. But man, me and country, we've been on the road for a long time together. Nice, um, man. That that shocked oh, yeah. me. I I did not know that. I've known Big Country for a couple of years now. He might have said it, but I I I probably you know dismissed it because yeah. that's you know. Oh no, me and Big but, Country, man, man that's. Boy. That's awesome, man, because he's he's one of my favorites. Everybody knows he's one of my favorites in EWF and, and in the surrounding area. He's definitely my favorite, too. I mean, I've managed him, and I've seen probably more of his matches than anybody else in the world. And every time I see him, he does something that I'm just like, how did you do that? I've never seen that before. Like his drop kicks, his super kicks. I mean, and I've seen other guys. I saw James Drake powerbomb him. Oh, my goodness. James Drake Man, actually like, got Big Country up and powerbombed him? Yes. He actually, Ooh. Country was going for the splash. James crawled underneath him, picked Country up, walked three steps, and slammed him. I was Country's manager and I lost my mind over that. <laughs> <laughs> I would have totally okay, lost would, my mind. That would have been something to take video. Mind. Man, there's got to be a video was, of that somewhere. I was on the ring apron. I was going nuts when that happened because I I was 
I didn't want my, I couldn't believe somebody actually did that, but it did happen. I was there. I saw it. It's true. <laughs> wow. Now you've been a manager for, uh, is it fair to say you've managed longer than you've wrestled? Cause I, I've seen you do a few wrestling matches. I don't wrestle. <laughs> I, <I'm> not, <laughs> I've seen it though. Wrestle. I've seen it. <laughs> I get forced into matches. <laughs> but I'm I'm not what people I'm not what promoters consider a wrestler but yes I have had a lot of matches but it's just because the fans want to see me get beat up <laughs> it, it's sort of oh, like well, all right if you lose to this guy we get five minutes with your manager right sort of like that oh, yeah <laughs> yeah something like that but there have been matches where if this guy loses, you have to wrestle at the next show. And oh, I've done a goodness. few hair versus hair matches. And uh, one of the best matches I ever did that was a real match was at something called the, it was a Greenwood, uh, South Carolina, I believe. Okay. It's called the Catfish Festival. They call it the Catfish Festival. It's an outside fair they do every year. And I had a Russian chain match with Rex Rumble. Oh, my and gosh. You got to tell that probably, story. That was probably the best match I ever had. I mean, I lost, of course. But, uh, I mean, it was so perfect. The, the story we told and everything we did was just spot on the crowd was into the whole match and it made sense and that was probably my favorite uh, not my, that was probably my best match physically and as far as stamina and being out in the ring for 25 minutes just me was probably my best match what would what would you tell somebody who uh who isn't a wrestler like myself who would want to be a manager because they've got the charisma. They've got, you know, they know how to play the wrestling game. They, they got good, you know, they can talk yeah. like nobody's business. Mike skills, Mike skills, things like that. What, what advice would you give somebody before they started? You, you got to go through wrestling training. You, you can't just be somebody's buddy. You can't just listen to somebody say, Oh, we'll give you a mic and you talk. You got to know how to take bumps. You got to know how to get beat up. I mean, and that's good for you because if you don't know how to do those things and they want you to do it and you do it and you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get hurt. So the right. best advice for up and come managers is go through training. You, you don't have to learn how to do super kicks off the top rope or anything like that. But I mean, learn the basics. Learn the basics. Uh, learn everything. That's the key to wrestling. Learn everything. I mean, I've, I've been a referee before. I've done a manager. Of course, I've had matches. I'm not above working the concession stands and, of course, ring crew. I mean, learn everything. I mean, that's how you get in the business. Be, be important. Be helpful and be respectful. That's it, without a doubt. Now you mentioned uh, who is who is probably the most famous wrestler that you have managed. I mean, I've heard you say Abyss, Crucifix. Who would you say right now of all the people you managed, it became the most popular or is the most popular? Oh, um, I'd have to go with James Drake. I mean, he's on fire right now. Right, without a doubt. I, I mean, mean, that's can't I mean, go wrong with that. I mean, I mean, you still got Abyss. He's doing good, but he's more behind the scenes now. Uh, they're all doing good. They're all doing great. Um, uh, Gangrel, when I managed him, he's got his own wrestling school now down in Florida, so he's doing good. Uh, D'Lo Brown, I think he just signed a deal. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, they're all doing good. Paul Wilson has just said something that has to have a story behind it. He said, like the fan did when you knocked him out. You knocked out a fan? <laughs> oh, no. No. I never knocked out a fan. Uh, no. Did you ever get into a skirmish never... with a fan? Yes. 
I got into uh, I I got punched in the back of the head by fans. I've had fans pull knives on me. Uh, I had an old guy push me. Uh, I've had wow. several. Wow, they they get that like mad that. at the Father Darkness gimmick that you've actually had knives drawn on you at a, at a show? Oh. Oh, yeah, several times. They had to uh, walk me to my car because this guy was waiting on me. It was like, I might look like I'm a fighter, but I'm really not. This guy's standing outside waiting with a knife. And it's like, nah, I'm good. Come on, security. Let's go. You, 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 <laughs> I have, I've heard of people getting mad at heels and have, you know, heels being having to, you know, having to be walked to their car. But okay. Father Darkness, no, a manager. Oh, wow, that that shocks me, man. I mean, for for a human being not to realize that wrestling, you know what wrestling is. I'm, I I will never call wrestling fake. It's not fake, but you have to know what wrestling is before you come in and watch a show. If you get that mad to where you really want to kill somebody who's entertaining you. Man, I could imagine what a person like that would do if they were at a movie theater and somebody got on their nerve. What would they do? Shoot the screen? Oh, <laughs> and that's not even the funniest thing that ever happened. And you can ask Big Country because I, next time you interview Big Country, ask him about this one. Because uh, <clears throat> when me and Big Country were together, we did a show somewhere in North Carolina. We made a woman so mad she left the building. And when she left the building, she left her baby in a stroller inside. She left and left her baby there by by itself. She left her baby by itself and walked outside the building. She was so mad at us. <laughs> oh That's a true story. Wow. That happened. And That's we, crazy. I mean, there, we had people looking at the baby. The baby was okay, but... You know, when she walked back in the door to get that baby, we didn't stop. We kept going. We we're like, you just got mother of the year. We're we're going off on her. Like, oh. <laughs> wow. Frank Roof said, Scott Larson, is that the Ernest goes to jail, dude? No, this is Art Long, Frank. Come on, man. You know better than that. Jim Varney's dead. That ain't funny. Yeah, that Jim Varney died a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's kind of a rude joke, dude. Oh. I don't like that. <laughs> Jackie Jones, what's going on, Scott Larson? Hope you had a good night. I'm having a great night. I'm sitting here talking with Father Darkness, man. We're going to get into your other alter ego here in a few minutes, Art Long. I'm going to take some of these uh, uh, comments and questions. Okay. Paul J. Wilson says uh, he, was, he was the ref when you uh, knocked out when you knock the fan out, I think he said something about arm armier. I don't know what that is. Maybe that'll jog your memory. He must be talking about the old guy thing, but I the one was the in the out. army. He said the one was in the army. In the army. When the barbarian was there. Yeah, I'm sure he's talking about that incident. Okay. That happened where, and I didn't knock the guy out. I just held him until security finally got there, which they were not on their game that night. <laughs> I I just can't believe that that fans actually would come to a wrestling event with knives to begin <clears throat> with. I mean, I don't even care if you're a oh. country boy or not. There's no need to bring any kind of weapon to a wrestling show. And then get so mad at a wrestler who's entertaining, who's supposed to be a bad guy and act like a bad guy, and you get so mad that you pull a knife out on that person. That that blows my mind. I have made people so mad, especially old women, older women. Yeah, I can call them old women. Like, if you're in your <laughs> 70s, I have made old women in wheelchairs stand. They were so mad at me that they would stand up to <laughs> yell at me. So I can perform miracles. I can make wheelchair people stand up. And I mean, that's pretty cool. That That's when you know you're doing something right. My wall behind me is about to fall down. So if you're wondering why I'm turning around doing this, my wall is about to fall on my head. So, but uh, now you have an alter ego. 
and he likes to dance. Tell, oh, yeah. tell me about dance him. Machine. Dance machine aren't long. He just went and saw new kids on the block the other day. <laughs> oh, man, I bet you were dancing along to them, weren't you? He was. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> he had the right stuff, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he's still hanging tough after all these years. <laughs> We could go on and on uh, with those, man. Were were you was you on a cruise? Was that the New Kids on the Block cruise, or was it at a concert? No, they were just up at the Bon Secure Wellness Arena in Greenville. Okay, okay, and nothing wrong wife, with that. Get, I'll make a confession. Uh, I like New Kids on the Block, so yeah. Hey, I, I like I like some of their music too, man. I I am a huge '80s nut and '80s pop. All oh, the yeah. boy bands. I still play him. Me and my wife. Debbie Gibson. Oh, it was a good dude. Debbie Gibson was my girl, man. I had all the girls at my school would bring me Debbie Gibson posters. My wall was plastered with Debbie Gibson posters. I've got all her albums, bro. I'm a huge Debbie Gibson. She can't sing worth the crap now that she's older, but back in the day. Oh, woo. No, you, no, she's still good, man. She's still oh, good. Oh, my God. I saw her sing the other day. <laughs> You're covering me up. I saw her sing the other day, and I almost cried. It, it was bad. It was pretty bad. But maybe maybe it was just the, the background music and, and the way they set her up. But, man, I, I loved her back back in the good old days, man, when she was young and writing her own songs and stuff. That I love that. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> So, what kind of music does Father Darkness come out to? Give me some of your uh, songs that you've come out to being Father Darkness. Uh, the, the one that I'm most famous for, or the one that people most know, is uh, the theme song from Saul. Okay. The, the movie Saul is like, no, no, no. Oh, no, I, I no, 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 no. trust me. I know Saul, man. That's my favorite. That's yeah. my favorite horror series. I've got all eight of them. Yeah, that is uh that's the one I use the most. Uh I just had my own personal music made and it's like a combination of a lot of everything. It's got a little bit of bell tones in it, demonic music. I used to come out to prayers. Uh Alice Cooper. Of course, I've oh. come out to Alice Cooper several times. Rhonda Carswell wants to know, how's your promotion going, Father Darkness? <clears throat> my promotion. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> I guess that means my own wrestling promotion. I I would assume. Oh, well, uh, uh, <laughs> are, are you trying um, to get, are you trying to get up your own promotion? That's a good question. <clears throat> if, if maybe she knows something, I don't, <laughs> um, no, I've been asked several times to do one. And I've even looked into it, but, um, you know, when, when, even when you start talking about doing your own promotion, you start getting friends that you never had before. And <laughs> you have people that never talk to you, never liked you, want to talk to you all of a sudden. And I was just like, mm, I don't is know. It, isn't that amazing how that happens? You know, you were, you, were, and, and don't take this the wrong way, but. Some people think like that. You were just a, you were just, you know, somebody who walked out with wrestlers. But when you want to start a promotion, all of a sudden, oh man, I loved your stuff, man. Let's talk. We got to talk because yeah. you know. <laughs> and, and yeah, and and that from manager to best friend. You know, <laughs> there, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with guys trying to get bookings or anything like that. But I mean, I mean, it, it's even people that have said negative things about me hit me up and said oh that was just a joke oh that was a work i was just playing i'm like if you're playing you'd tell me you'd let me know you know you, you apologize right away and yeah. let you know right yeah exactly yeah i've got a lot of people like that when it comes to me man i you know they'll come on here and they'll they'll you know totally rip me from one end to the other but i know it's all in jest you know you, you but yeah, some people get serious about it man there's no reason to no i mean you're doing your thing you're doing your show why is somebody gonna rip you because you're a guest on their show that's stupid 
why would I rip you because you're interviewing me? That doesn't make any sense at all. And people just don't pay attention anymore. They're not respectful <laughs> like they used to be. I've, 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 and I'm talking about people that will come on the show, and I'm not going to name any names, Frank Roof, but, you know, <laughs> They come on and, and, and they give me the business, but I know they're kidding. They're doing it in jest. You know what I'm saying? And and that's what's awesome. But then you got a few people that will come on here and they're serious. They can't stand me. They can't stand who I bring on this show. They can't, you know, they'll, they'll go under, you know, the things that I put up when I'm having a wrestler on here and they'll say, oh, I'm not watching that. You know, I, I'm not, I, I, I'm going to wait until you get somebody worth watching. You don't know oh, the premise to my show. <laughs> you'll you'll get a lot of people saying, "Oh, why are you talking to this old guy?" You'll get that. Don't matter. Hey, but, but that, but you know what? Thing, I love sitting here listening to this old guy because he has a lot of wrestling knowledge and a lot of wrestling stories, and that's that's what I, you know, that's what brings people to watching hashtag Truth Man is is you know people ask me, well, why are you bringing on these veterans that have been in the business for thirty years? They're never going to get anywhere. Well, those veterans have a lot of cool stories, you know, you know, like, you know, so I I love having every one of you guys on and, and anytime, you know, you can sit down and tell me a wrestling story. I'm I'm there brother. Cause that's, I mean, who can say they managed abyss who can say they managed, you know, crucifix who can say they managed, you know, Drake and, and stars like that. I don't hear a lot of people raising their hands. See a lot of people raising their hands or, or taking credit for that. So, I mean, you did something a lot of people wish they could do it. Me especially because I can't wrestle, but I'd love to be a manager one day. But I, I just don't know how to break in and do that. But, hey, as long as I got this gig right here, I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you You got a good gig right there because you ain't going to get hurt. <laughs> the only thing that gets hurt every once in a while is my feelings, but that's okay. I'm a big boy. I got thick skin. I can take it. So, so tell me, tell me, Father Darkness, um, has there ever ever been a time where you've walked to the ring and had like uh, another manager opposite of you, or? Maybe even the guy that you're managing, the wrestler he's fighting, actually intimidates you? Mm. You know, you're, you're supposed to come out as this scary being, but, you know, you look on the other side of the ring and there's this beast. Has anybody ever intimidated Father Darkness? Big country, of course, when he's not <laughs> on my side. <laughs> that that would That would definitely intimidate me if I saw Big Country mad at me. Yeah, when he's not on my side, my my last match that I had, he actually packaged pile drive me on a steel chair. So that's probably why I haven't been wrestling in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that would put you out for a little while, man. That that's yeah. a big guy hitting you right there. Oh, okay. Here, Rhonda says I must have misunderstood. I thought you were going to start shows in Tennessee. Oh, I work in Tennessee. I do wrestling shows for RWA in Tennessee. Ah, there you go. Yep, you misunderstood. He's working as in wrestling. (laughs) Actually, I'm the general manager of RWA. Oh, nice. How'd you get that gig? They knew who I was and offered it to me. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) Nothing wrong with that, man. When you get a name and somebody comes calling, that's (laughs) that's when you know you've been somewhere, man. So you, you were talking about, let me ask you a question. You were talking about, uh, you were talking about YouTube and I know there's a bunch of stuff with me on YouTube. One of, and you guys were talking about good matches and things like that. Have you ever seen the match where I fought chainsaw? No. Chainsaw is uh, a little person. He's a a midget short. Okay. Okay. And, uh, I wrestled him probably twice, and those were probably some of the funniest matches I had ever done. So if you guys are looking for me on YouTube, try to find those matches, Father Darkness vs. Chainsaw. I will definitely try to look that up. That sounds like... What what brought that kind of match on? Uh, 
what what promoter came to you and said, uh, hey, you want to wrestle a little guy? <laughs> the first time I did it was Rex Rumble. Rex Rumble did it the first time. Uh, another promoter did it the second time. But it got so much uh, attention the first time we did it, they wanted to see it again. And we even got booked to do it a third time. But uh, something had happened with his family at that time, so we didn't have the match. But uh, a lot of people liked seeing me do that. But the idea probably came from, um, like, one of the greatest wrestling managers of all time, Bobby Heenan. Oh. One of the most things he's notorious for was his matches against the little people, the midgets. He he wrestled them all the time, and people loved it. And so that was the idea behind it. Not saying I'm Bobby Heenan or nothing. No, like that, no, so no, no. Pinch me. Uh, you just but you just brought just, me to a good question, yeah. man. You mentioned Bobby Heenan and and. That back in the early '80s, man, WWE, there was <clears throat> there was a good handful, six, seven great managers back then. Nowadays, it, it's very hard to find good managers. Um, why why do you think today's wrestling doesn't use managers as often as as the old school wrestlers did? Is it a lost art? No, there's a couple reasons, and I think I think they are starting to slowly bring them back slowly I mean, it's, a, it's a very slow process but they're more of like hype man now than wrestlers right, right. you get that and like it's like paul Heyman, who's one of the greatest in the business oh. he uh is an advocate he's not a manager he's an advocate they don't use right. the term manager anymore and that doesn't make sense to me um, but you, you still well, w, WWE wants to change the game, you know, to, to what they do anyway. And I'm not saying Paul Heyman says that because of the WWE. Paul Heyman is a genius when it comes to being a, a, a manager Good advocate. Question. You could put any title on Paul Heyman, and Paul Heyman is going to do it, you know, 110%, you know, awesomely. I mean, there's nothing I, I, I think if it wasn't for WWE, I think ECW would would still be going strong today. He just couldn't. Yeah. He just couldn't compete. Yeah. And uh, oh, speaking of speaking of guys, I am righteous. Welcome to the show, man. Oh, I know he's gonna give me trouble. He always <laughs> I am righteous. Give some questions, man. Pop some questions up here for your good friend, Father Darkness, man. But uh, as you were saying, like about managers and stuff, every every time I get a chance, like I've I've done things with Jim Cornette, and uh, oh. I was I was actually in the ring with Teddy Long, and one of the most, and it's funny, but you know, this is an interview. I'm gonna tell you the truth. When I was in the ring with Teddy Long, we did this promo, and the whole promo was pretty much. I was telling Teddy Long that he was one that I watched when I was a kid. He's the reason I got in this business. But I looked him dead in the eyes and told him I'm better than he ever was. Oh. And when I and and Teddy was funny because the whole time I'm telling him I'm better than him, he's sitting there like this with his WWE Hall of Fame ring. And I'm just like, I'm you know. <laughs> what what can you say was, to that? <laughs> yeah, I was nervous. I was. He calmed me down because we ended up doing two shows together. We ended up doing more shows together, but he calmed me down. He's like, "Look, you're great. You're doing good. Keep it going. Don't be nervous. This is about you. This ain't about me." And I was like, "He totally earned my respect with that." So it was cool. Did you did you ever uh, go to the ring as Father Darkness and have have something in the match go completely wrong? Something that wasn't scripted or a wrestler accidentally, you know, uh, I wouldn't say hit you, but you know, a move went awry and you might have got clipped or something. Or 
Or you're on the apron doing your doing your you know managerial things, and and a wrestler accidentally throws you off the apron. Have, have you had anything like that happen to you? Well, I can give you two right off the top of my head. Uh, you know the blue curtain that goes over the ring, the one yep. that covers up the the stuff on the bottom. Right. I've tripped on that and fell off the ring several times. <laughs> uh, you just get your foot caught under it. And right. I tripped and fell off, and uh, but probably the one I'm most embarrassed about was uh, I was doing a masked gimmick one time called Mister Funk, <laughs> and I and the whole thing was I'm gonna pull the mask off and reveal that I'm really Father Darkness, and that's why my guy just became champion or whatever, you know, whatever the storyline was. But I actually broke my ankle on the way to the ring. Oh, no. Yeah, I did. I broke my ankle because I was kind of dancing around, hyping up the crowd because the mass wrestler was supposed to be the good guy. And I had just bent my foot funny and I landed on my ankle twisted. Ooh. So I had broke my ankle and still somehow gotten to the ring. And we did we did the match and it was over. And... We get back in the back, and I find out my ankle's broken, but I, I still had two more shows booked that weekend. I had to drive to Georgia with a broken ankle, and I did two shows down there. I think they were Saturday and Sunday shows. And You did then, three shows with a broken ankle before going to the hospital. Yes. I went to the hospital wow. on Monday. That's, that's dedication, brother. That is and I Wow. Drink. I was the one who had to drive us there. <laughs> oh, wow. That is pure dedication. I don't know many people in today's wrestling that would do that. And, and I'm being serious. I, I don't know many people who would have a broken bone in their body and continue to do their job no matter what, what was going on. They still make my friends that were there for that one, they still make fun of me. It's like, who breaks their ankle walking to the ring? Like, <laughs> that That is true, though, I'm man. But but you were dancing. I, uh, you, uh, you were kind of prancing and dancing, right? Because you were, you were supposedly the good guy under a mask, right? Yeah, it was. But no, we that's that's what you do, man. You If you got bookings, you don't cancel your bookings. You go with a broken ankle <laughs> and drive to Georgia. That is some crazy stuff, man. Hey, we got a few more people on here. Father of Darkness, you guys throw some questions his way. He'll be more than willing to answer them. He's seen a lot of crazy stuff in his many years. He's been telling us stories for the last 47 minutes. And, wow. yeah, we've been on here 40. Time flies when you're having fun and talking about wrestling, man. Let me tell you. I can, I can talk about me forever. That's my favorite topic. <laughs> has there ever been a wrestler you didn't want to manage have, has a promoter ever came to you and said hey i want you to i want you to manage this guy and you and him just didn't gel at all you just couldn't stand the guy from get-go no i don't i don't think that's ever happened i've had a few that i've wanted to manage that i've never got the opportunity to but if you got a guy that's a heel and he might be lacking mic skills or the crowd just doesn't really hate him enough and you put me with him, that's going to work. So, no, there's there's never been anybody that I've never wanted to work with. Have you ever done a promo in the ring and had people, like, throw garbage at you or throw things at you or – or the whole Sodas, the whole crowd yeah. just absolutely just went berserk because of what you said. It's it, I've never had the whole crowd do it, but every once in a while you'll get like I've been and my outfit's expensive, <laughs> so I get mad whenever it happens. But uh, I've had nachos thrown at me, sodas. <laughs> I've been hit with canes. Uh, I used that, to I used to pass the collection plate around so people would put money in it to pay for their sins, <laughs> but they would put trash in it. 
<laughs> they would put trash in my plate. And I would tell people, like, I would walk back in the ring with all oh. this trash. And I said, I want you to know this is what all of you are worth right here. And I would put the trash out in the middle of the ring. So, I mean. Have you have you ever had a preacher go one on one against you at a show? A real preacher. A real preacher. And I'm telling you, I've met three of them at wrestling shows. I've met three. And they wait to meet me at the end of the show because they like me. They want to take pictures with me. They want my autograph. I've only met three. But Preachers like my character. I don't get it. <laughs> I would, I would it? think they'd be over there trying to save your soul, brother. <laughs> oh, I would too. But they're like, oh, no, you did a great job. We love you. And <laughs> I, they've even asked me to speak at churches before. And I haven't. I, I've never. I haven't done that. But I have made appearances at church fundraisers for them. So Brandon, I've never spoken at a church, but I'll, I'll bring some pictures and sign them at a fundraiser or something like that for him. And that's I what I'm talking that. about, man. Brandon Owen says he wants to see Father Darkness at EWF, man. I would love to see you get back together with Big Country, man, and and make a run at EWF. That that would that would really make my day. But yeah, I, I think agree. Big Country could probably use me at EWF. I mean, he's having a lot of problems with Dexter Myers right now. So, <laughs> well, he's having more problems with the uh, I, I call them the unbearables, but the unbookables. And that well, I that's... think that needs to be my title. I think I'm an unbookable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't give him any ideas, man. Because if Father <laughs> Darkness ever came out in EWF as an unbookable, I'd have to boo you off the stage, brother. I, I just can't. I I can't have Father Darkness being an unbookable, man. That would be. That would be horrible. No, it would be. It would Those be. Those are good guys, though. They they good. They good work. Oh right man, there. they are excellent wrestlers. I'll never, <laughs> never, yeah. never talk uh, lowly about their wrestling skills. But well, as a faction, I love to hate them. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. of course. It makes my day to hate the unbookables, man. If anybody's ever watched my show or watched me interview any of them, I I love to hate them, and it's 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 a lot of fun doing it. <clears throat> so, tell 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 me a little bit about your family. Are you married? Do you have kids? Do do does everybody in your family like that you're into wrestling the way you are? My kids like it a lot. My wife not so much because she's afraid I might get hurt. You know, something like that. Plus, all the time on the road and all that kind of thing. But my kids love it because they they go to like a wrestling show on Friday and go to school on Monday and tell their friends, Oh, we hang out with gang And the kids are like, no, you didn't. And it's like, Oh, we got pictures. Yes, we did. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. See, look, great thing about cell phones and stuff nowadays, man. I, I love that. Cause yeah. we, we do the same thing, man. We, we, we go to wrestling on Saturdays or mostly on Saturdays. Oh, excuse me. Mountain Dew burp. We go to wrestling on Saturdays, and we'll take pictures with the wrestlers. And, and my daughter, in, in her bedroom, man, she's got a whole wall of EWF wrestlers and pictures that she had made with them. And they and they and and she went back the next day after she printed them out, and they signed them. So she's got a whole wall of, like, 15 wrestlers at EWF with, with signed photographs. Oh, my so. kids have autograph cards. They got a... Like they bought a WWF yearbook and that thing's half autographed with the people we've met and worked with. Oh, now see that's awesome. Now that's something right there. If you get, if you get, you know, some of them aren't here with us anymore. But if you yeah. can get all the ones that are alive in that yearbook and get them signed, man, that's something to put in that safe for a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, we got several of those. Yeah, several. Oh man, that's that's excellent. Now. Let me ask you something, man. Have you ever been asked to go on one of the big shows? Um, you said you've been on shows with Teddy Long. You've been on, you know, with uh, with Paul Heyman and, and things like that. Have you ever been asked to come to do a show at WWE or 
or anything of the like? I've been in talks before, but nothing ever came of it. Because I, because because I could yeah. see you coming out with uh, what's his name? We were talking about him earlier with the lights and all that. Uh, Bray uh, Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. I mean, I could see you coming out with Bray Wyatt. That that would just be a match to me made in heaven, especially with his new gimmick, man. Have you seen his new gimmick? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. People thought I was stealing it. <laughs> <laughs> but I I could see you coming out with him, man, with his new gimmick and and yeah. and, and and the new look he's got, and you following behind with the book in your hand, and oh man, that would be that would be. That would make me shiver, man. It makes me shiver just thinking about it. Oh, there's there's a lot of people that I think I would work good with, but you know, it's just it's all timing. It takes time, and you know, I'm not done with wrestling. I'm still trying. I'm still hungry. I'm still wanting to be a part of it. So you never know. One day. Well, you you be sure to let me know where you're going to be at in the future. I have uh, I have not seen you live like I. Like we talked beforehand, you know, I was going to see you live. You had you had something happen in your family, and I wasn't yeah. able to see you, and I was really sad about that. But, you know, I, I, I really want to see you live. So if, if you have any upcoming events, man, you be sure to let me know. Are you slated for any upcoming events? Well, right now uh, I'm focusing on my cooking show. I don't know if you've seen that or not, but I have a cooking show right now. I did not know you have a cooking show, man. Tell me about it. <laughs> It's, my uh, God, it's plug called, away, my man. It's called Cooking with a Touch of Darkness. Uh, y'all can see it on my Facebook page. It's on my Facebook page. I'll share it again later tonight. But it's uh, a lot of people, I always put pictures of me grilling and cooking and things like that. And so uh, we just decided to film a pilot episode and we sent it out a few places. It's It's kind of long. It's 17 minutes, but. It's uh getting a lot of for a cooking feet. show. Seventeen minutes isn't long at all, brother. Most cooking well, shows on television are an hour or two. But you film like seventeen minutes and have it's a thirty minute show and you have commercials in between. So right, right. I got that's you. kind I got of you. what we were. That's kind of what we were going for with the timing. But uh, we've got a lot of good reviews from it. it. It's a good show. It's called Cooking with a Touch of Darkness. So, uh, so your first show, what'd you cook for us? I actually, it's actually a burger I created. I call it the Blue Hawaiian Burger. Okay. It's a it's a grilled hamburger stuffed with blue cheese, crushed pineapple, and pineapple on top on a King's Hawaiian bun with blue cheese dressing on top. Oh, you're making me hungry, brother. I'm gonna have to check that out. So. <laughs> You go to Art Long, so you go to Art Long's Facebook page, and you will find yep. that on your page. Yep, yep. It's called Cooking with a Touch of Darkness. Uh, we have good graphics. We have a couple commercials in there. Uh, like I said, it's a little long. It's seventeen minutes, but everybody that's watched it has loved it. They think it's hilarious. It's great. So, but it's also well. Really I am fun. definitely going to go check that out right after we get off the air, brother, because. That is something that I could get into right there, man. If, if, if I can't see you in a wrestling ring, maybe you could teach me a few things in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Cook it and grill it. That's always been one thing I've been big with. Brandon says, I actually have a poster from a show in Shelby with the autographs of Father Darkness, Big Country, Abyss, Buff Bagwell, and Jim Nighthorn on it. Oh, my goodness. That is that is something to cherish, Brandon. That that yeah. is a lot of good autographs right there. And I know Brandon. Hi, Brandon. I ain't seen him <laughs> in a while, but I know, I've met him at shows in the past. So yeah, I know. Oh yeah, he frequents EWF, man. He sits with me. He knows how loud I can get. He comes where the loudness is, man. <laughs> well, Father Darkness, man, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. Everybody, check him out on Art Long Facebook page, man. Check out his cooking show. And, man, I cannot wait to see you in wrestling again. Come out and, and, and make somebody look really good as their manager. 
when 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 you get your next show, let us know. I want to I want to be one of the first yeah. ones to put the poster up, and I will definitely try my hardest to be there, brother. Oh, thank you, and and you know I bet not a lot of your guests do this, but thank you for what you do. I mean, <laughs> Thanks, you're man. Keeping, you're, no, man, I'm serious. You're keeping your net. You're keeping our names out there. You're keeping us relevant. You're supporting what you love, and you don't get enough respect for it. You got nothing but love from me and Father Darkness. So, thank you. From I appreciate Father everything, Father. man. Like I said, I I do hashtag truth so we can all grow together, man. That's that's what I want to see. I want to see all of us bust through that wall together, and it would be a great pleasure, man. And and I hope. Nothing but good things in your future, man. Definitely. It's looking good. All right. Well, let me let me do a little promo for my show since we're doing that before I get you off the air. Next week on Hashtag Truth, Andy Aries, I Am Righteous, Sammy Love, J.D. Corm Com I'm going to mess that name up. He's a referee, J.D. Cormier, I think. Cormier. He 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 pronounced it for me. I'm gonna mess it up horribly. Mabel Rose and Neil Lee next week on my show. You don't want to miss it. I've got it up on my uh Facebook page. Go to hashtag truth YouTube page, subscribe. I'm getting close to 50. I want to get to 100 by the end of the month. You guys are knocking it through the roof. I appreciate everything you guys do. It only takes a minute. Go to YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell for notifications. All these interviews, the next day after they happen, get taken off my Facebook page and get put on my YouTube page, and they'll be there for eternity for everyone to watch. Father Darkness, man, it's been a pleasure. And oh, like you. I said, hope to see you soon, man. You will. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You always have an open invitation to hashtag truth, brother. You have a good night. Thank you.